What's up guys, Magnolia Mo here and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to take a close look at the BMW CT7.4 LCRS speakers and the BMW CT7.5 LCRS speakers. So you may want to check out my unboxing video that I did for these two speakers a couple months ago. I'm going to leave a card for it right here. I want to go over the reasons why I went back to these speakers. Okay? Primary reason was to have matching speakers all around, right? So uh, I have the five of these, right? As my bed layer speakers in my front three and then the surrounds, then I have two more back here. In addition, my CCM663s also use the same woofer and the same tweeter, all right? And that's the reason uh, for movies, specifically for movies, my whole thought was if I can have the same speakers all around, I'm going to get a better you know, surround experience. So each speaker in the 700 series line has the same Nautilus tube loaded tweeter and the Aramid fiber cone mid-range bass drivers. All of the speakers are at the same height. So I use the Rockwell um, speaker stands that I bought from Amazon. So same speaker stands for my left, right, and my front. And then I made sure I installed the, the back surrounds, the 7.5s, the same exact height as my side surrounds and as my front speakers, the left and the right. But the main idea here was uh, to have at least the left, the right, and the surround speakers all of them be at the same height. For my height speakers, I have two of the BMW M1s as my front height speakers, two of the CCM6663s 6663s as my top middle, and then two CCM663s as my rear heights. Okay, so I have a 0.6 setup consisting of front height, top middle, and rear height. My bed layer speakers are powered by my Macintosh MC8207 7 channel amplifier, 200 watts per channel with power guard. And then my height speakers, five of them are powered by the, the Marantz MM7055. And then one of my height speakers is powered by the Resson P75 power amplifier. I'm sorry, all of the processing is done by the Marantz. 8805A and that's it. So that is the overall setup. I do plan on running all of these speakers as large. So in the pure direct mode, I am going to take the subwoofers out of the mix uh, to give you guys my thought and my uh, impressions about these speakers. All right, so let's go. So here is the overall frequency response of the left and right CT7.4 in my room. As you can see that the, they start to roll off around 30 hertz, which is, is fine. There's some room gain here. I do uh, cross them over at 80 hertz. And then what's important is the strong mid-range and the, the linear output uh, through the high frequencies. Before the spatial audio calibration toolkit, I would play scenes from Gravity in Dolby Atmos to listen to George Clooney and Sandra Bullock's voice as they moved around the room. Uh, it always was a good test to determine timbre matching of my speakers. Now that we have the SACT, uh, I like to play the voice diagonals in the, few, in the torture test section uh, using Technodad's voice. To me, it is a better test than band limited or full band pink noise moving through the speakers uh, as it is found on the Avia Guide to Home Theater disc, uh, DVD disc that I have. Uh, on this test on the SACT, the diagonal movement causes Chana's voice to travel in a linear and predictable movement through the center of the room uh, where there are no speakers. As expected, since all the speakers are identical, it was no surprise uh, to me to actually hear the same tonal balance as Chana's voice moved or traveled uh, throughout the room. Moving around your room. Here I am, just moving. Moving around your room. Can you hear me moving? 
through your room, moving. Switching to actual movie content, 2023's Leave the World Behind has some great demo-worthy audio-video scenes, at least in my opinion. The movie, eh, right? But the, the audio and the video uh, is, like I said, demo-worthy. Uh, at the 1 hour 20 minute mark, there is some great sound and camera movement that will have you turn your head with the camera. And the best part is, the sound moves with the camera pans, right? If you have speakers that are camera matched, the sound pans will be seamless with no gaps and dips. There is percussion that moves from side to side, from speaker to speaker, from front, you know, go diagonal, from front to back as well. With all that was happening, right? With all that was happening in the scene, the dialogue was still clear and the bass was present when it needed to be, even without the subs. Brad Pitt's 2014 Fury has some great tank battle scenes, especially around the one hour, 20 minute mark that pound your chest. Running the speakers full range with no subs did not disappoint. There was still lots of bass present in, you know, in the overall sound design. The mid-range actually was full uh, and the dialogue was clear. He's coming out! Next up was Oppenheimer. The violin as a central theme which represent Oppenheimer's character and the film's main theme, right? The tension in the music mirrors the highly strung in intellect and emotions of Robert, o Robert Oppenheimer. Gorenson's unrelenting score blends orchestral elements with piano, harps, and other sounds from Oppenheimer's world, from feet stomping to synthesizers pulsing. The music creates an atmosphere of tension, dread, and anticipation. At the one hour, 50 minute mark, the Big Bang scene, that is the best representation of the tension and the anticipation followed by dread. Uh, the CT7.4s combined with the CT7.5s brought this entire scene to life with violins panning from speaker to speaker, with creating the tension that needed to be created, right, for this particular scene. <laughs> that needle. If the detonators don't charge and the voltage drops below one volt, you hit that button, you abort. Understood? Understood. These things are hard in your heart. to multi-channel music for my music evaluation. Yes, I would not tout the CT7.4s or the 7.5s for their two-channel performance, but they shine in multi-channel, Dolby Atmos or DTS or DVD audio, uh, whatever you can get your hands on from a multi-channel music perspective, possibly because of the matching speakers all around. Right? I love the Dolby Atmos on Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon, the footsteps on the track on the run, literally, uh, as they go from center to right to right surround, are almost holographic in, in nature, right? Without calling attention to specific speakers. Uh, the bells in the beginning of time were almost like they were in my room. I could make out the various shape, the height, and the placement of each, each distinct bell from high to low, where they were situated. The bass on this track uh, before the, the track gets going is also deep. Not, again, you know, does not replace subwoofers, but it was pretty deep. 
the cash register at the beginning of money and the dueling guitars and the sax were also great. <laughs> My go-to multi-channel SACD is Rumors by Fleetwood Mac. The cymbal crash at the beginning of Dreams is a torture test in my opinion. Um, less capable speakers will not have the same texture and natural decay that that, that cymbal has. Uh, the CT series did a fabulous job with this, with the multi-channel presentation. What I love about the multi-channel music uh, through the CT series is the clear and neutral mid-range. The Nautilus tweeter is easy to listen to, it's not fatiguing. I hope you guys like this video and as usual please don't forget to like subscribe and share this video and I look forward to hearing from you your feedback if you have these speakers or what other speakers uh, you have that are matching speakers that that uh, you tend to agree with the, the things that I've noted or you know in this particular video around the fact that you know if you have the same speaker all around right it does make a difference uh, in the overall sound and overall presentation uh, all right so I will see you guys in the next one